أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهد قلبه والله بكل شيء عليم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي We are now on the 28th juz and very difficult juz to pick an ayah from but I've picked an ayah from Surah At-Taghabun an ayah that I still remember when my teacher Dr. Abdul Sami taught I sat there crying um, the 11th ayah of Surah At-Taghabun Surah number 64 that is when Allah says مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ no calamity of any sort ever, ever, ever strikes you. Musiba is calamity. But asaba in Arabic also means to, to target. To target. Allah is teaching us by use of this word that nothing ever happens to you that wasn't actually meant for you. It was specifically targeted to you and it that difficulty hit its target. And a musiba cannot necessarily, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's something that Allah wanted to have happen to you. And Allah lets you know, إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Get it through, the word ma in the beginning of the ayah is actually a refutation. Don't you ever think that it was anyone other than Allah that put you through what you're going through. It was always Allah, it is Allah's permission that allowed to, for what happened to you to happen to you. Good or bad, it was Allah's will directly. If you're not happy with Allah's will, which what we call ma sha Allah, whatever Allah wills. Raditu billahi, raditu bi mashiyatillah. I am pleased with the will of Allah, whatever Allah wills, whether I am suffering as a result of it, or whether I am overjoyed as a result of it. I am pleased with the will of Allah. That is that is truly accepting that I am a slave of Allah, that He is my master. Allah says there is not a single calamity that hits you except that it's by Allah's permission. وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ And throughout that calamity, whoever can maintain their faith. And it's a conditional statement. You know why it's a conditional statement? Because when calamity hits is when people lose their faith. That's when you start questioning God. That's when you start questioning, why would Allah do this to me? If He loves me and if He created me and He wants to take care of me, what kind of a Rahman is this that is putting me through these things? When that happens, then you no longer have faith. Allah says, whoever can maintain their iman during calamity, yahdi qalbahu, Allah will give him the, there's one gift. If you had this gift, you don't need anything else in life. Allah will give that gift to this person. Yahdi qalbahu, He will guide his heart. There is nothing more valuable in this world than Allah guaranteeing someone guidance. There's nothing, nothing, nothing more valuable. I don't know if I have guidance, you don't know if you have guidance. But Allah tells us this, you go through hardship and you maintain and strengthen your faith in Allah and Allah will give you the gift of real iman, real faith inside of your heart. It won't just be something you say on your tongue. Yahdi qalbahu, He'll guide his heart. He'll guide his emotions. He'll guide his remembrance. Allah will become your guide in everything that you do. Yahdi qalbahu. Allah didn't even say Yahdi he. He will guide him. He said Yahdi qalbahu. He will guide his heart. Every beat will be full of guidance. Every beat that heart takes will be with the remembrance of Allah. It's such an amazing thing. It's such an amazing thing. Everything in this world on the one hand, and the guidance of Allah in the heart of the believer. Yahdi qalbahu. And where does someone feel the pain of calamity and sadness? In their heart. Where do they feel that? In their heart. And Allah will remove it from their heart. My teacher used to tell us the story of this woman, this married couple, who had only one child and they had a child late in life and you know on the day of his graduation the child's graduating from high school he had a motorcycle on the way home he got into an accident and died 18 year old kid like in, in Pakistan somewhere you know a young kid and he died just like that and this kid is their life it is their joy it's their pride and it's the day he graduated the news comes that he's gone and they just go into serious, serious depression. And then the father eventually comes to the wife after a few weeks. And he tells her, you know, Allah gave us a toy. 
and he let us play with it for 18 years. And it was his, it wasn't ours. And he took back what was his. And instead of being grateful that he had us enjoy our lives for 18 years, we're, be, we're being like this. We should be grateful. This is real calamity and maintaining your faith. That's maintaining your faith. Because when you, when calamity hits, you start feeling like, I owe, I, Allah owes me something. Like, Allah owes me health. Allah owes me my children. Allah owes me my wife. Allah owes me my happiness. Allah owes me my job. Allah owes you nothing. You owe Allah everything. I don't own these fingers. I don't own this face. I don't own a single tooth. I don't own them. These are Allah's gifts. And He can take them as He pleases. And when He does, it is a reminder that it's not yours. That it's not mine. When He takes anything. And when the people, the people who don't really believe that Allah owns everything, they're the ones who lose their faith and say, it was mine, why did He take it? Why did He take it? This, this, this will enter your heart. When this faith enters your heart, then you will understand the ayat, Allah owns everything in the skies and the earth. It's so easy to say, right? So easy to say Allah owns everything in the skies and the earth. What does that mean practically for you and me? That means I own nothing. I don't even own myself. You know the thing we say to each other as I close? The thing we say to each other when we die? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We belong to Allah. To Him we are returned. If my entire being belongs to Allah, how is it that any part of me or any, any gift I have in life can belong to me? If I don't even own myself. This is the realization of Iman. This surah, Surah Al-Taghabun, is the surah of the fruits of Iman. What is it? What are the things that a person internalizes when they really, really, really have iman in Allah, real faith in Allah, this is what this surah is about. And this is why this is one of my favorite ayat of this surah. وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبَهِ I pray that Allah guides all of our hearts, and I conclude with the conclusion of the ayah, وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And Allah fully knows everything that goes on. Allah knows what you're going through. It's not like He doesn't know. He's the one who created that situation. He's the one that's testing you with it. May Allah Azza wa give you strength through your difficult times. And may Allah give you the ability to maintain and strengthen your iman in the middle of those insanely difficult trials so that you get the gift that nobody else in the world has like you do. And that is the gift of guidance into your hearts. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.